Out of all the new modules in CSS3, one of the most exciting is the Border and Backgrounds module. In this segment, we're going to take a look at a new property called Border Radius. Border Radius is one of the coolest new properties in CSS3, and it's really easy to learn. Border Radius allows you to round off the corners of your page elements without the use of images or ugly tables. The word radius refers to the radius of an imaginary circle with the origin at one of the corners of an element. You can imagine there being four of these circles. As you set the value for border radius higher and higher, you push the origin of the circle more towards the center of your page element, and the corners appear more curvy. Now, as you can see, I've created a basic page for us to experiment with. The box in the center of the screen is the one that we'll be applying border radius properties to. Now, just switching over to my text editor, you can see that we've set up a basic page with a wrapper div and a div that we're going to be working with. Now, switching over to my style sheet, you can also see that I've applied some basic styling just to kind of get the page in order and make it a bit prettier to look at. None of this is necessary, of course, for border radius to work. Now, we're going to apply a basic border radius to our div, and we'll do it in a separate style sheet here. To do this, we'll select the div, and we're going to type WebKit border radius, and we'll give it a pixel value. Let's save that out and see what it looks like in the browser. Pretty nifty. You can see that the corners have been rounded off, and we've done this without using any tables, any images, or any other weird non-semantic hacks. It just works. Now, let's flip back to our code and see what's going on here. I used pixels as the unit for my value, but just about any other CSS unit, like M's for example, would work just fine. Now, you do have to be careful with percentages, because at the time of this recording, they do not work in browsers that are based on the WebKit rendering engine. They don't work at all, in fact. However, the first thing that you probably noticed is that I prefixed the border radius property with a dash and the word WebKit. Like many other properties in CSS3 that are still in draft form, these properties have browser prefixes. Ultimately, the property name should just be border radius without the prefix, but because these standards aren't finalized yet, we need to use these prefixes in order to avoid compatibility issues down the road. Now, the border radius that I just created will only work in browsers that are based on the WebKit rendering engine, such as Chrome or Safari. To make this work in Gecko-based browsers like Firefox, we need to repeat the code, but this time use a Mozilla prefix. And we'll do that just like this. We'll type moz border radius, and we'll give it the same pixel value. Now, if we switch over to Firefox, we should see that it looks just like Chrome and Safari. Pretty cool. Now, if we only want to round off individual corners rather than all four corners, we can do that too. Let's say that we wanted to round off the upper left and bottom right corners. We'll switch back to our text editor and we'll delete what we have. And for WebKit, we'll type WebKit border top left radius and we'll give that a pixel value and for the bottom right radius we'll type webkit border bottom right radius and we'll give that a pixel value as well then if we switch back over to google chrome we see that it creates a teardrop effect and that the upper left and bottom right corners have been rounded off. Now of course we can do the same thing in Firefox, but the syntax is just a little bit different, so please pay attention to this bit very carefully. Now above or below our border radius declarations for WebKit, we'll put the properties for Mozilla. We'll type 
Ma's border radius top left and give that the same pixel value and then we'll type Ma's border radius bottom right. Then if we switch over to Firefox we should see the same result as we do in Google Chrome. Pretty cool.